So I'm on the brink of my 50th birthday. Uh, I am an extreme financial uh, strength, constraint. Um, I am living basically on the child support that Nelson's dad provides um, and, uh, and the charity of my parents. So that is, uh, makes it hard to celebrate in style, let's just say. And I think, you know, it's a natural consequence of being underemployed, so to speak, or completely unemployed and not earning a living and, and being very broke. Um, and let's be honest, pretty bitter <laughs> uh, that, you know, people like my relationships are strained, like my my close relationships are strained. And um, I think, you know, it's been <laughs> a lot of years um, building my self-esteem and working on self-talk and unconditional love for myself. And so uh, emotionally, yeah, it's hard and I'm struggling with self-esteem issues and da 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 But I also have this like unconditional trust in my gut and trusting the process and the creative process and the abundance of the world because that's what I've experienced and I'm very fortunate to have experienced this I'm very fortunate to have safety nets and um, com greater community not a close personal community I don't want to say that but I have a greater community maybe it's like being American maybe it's being from New Jersey I maybe it's like the college network or whatever but I know that I'm going to be okay. And that as far as I can fall, as long as I'm, you know, doing my best and, um, you know, minding my P's and Q's, I know that I can handle it. And I know that this is going to be okay. I know that um, I'm not alone. I know that, you know, what I'm experiencing is not unique to me entirely. Um, at this point in life, having plenty of time to sort of reflect on how I got here. Um, you know, how I got here is a long story and it is complicated. Um, I would say the core themes of how I got here um, reside in um, a few facts about my life. I think, you know, autism and ADHD uh, rung very strong in my family. So I know a lot of people are getting late in life diagnosis of these conditions. Um, I'm not one of those people. I was diagnosed in my teen years and even then it was quite late. Um, and I honestly don't believe there are any members of my um, nuclear family that could escape uh, being diagnosed as autistic. I think we're all autistic. Um, and I know that sounds gratuitous, but it's, it's not. And, um, uh, but it's not We're we have an undue burden in my family of, um, drama, emotional dysregulation, addiction, um, such an, an academic failure um, that it really points to this, um, this, this condition. Uh, and it's not just my immediate family. If you look back in the lineage, there are a lot of people that mirror those, those traits. And so I think it's really, really interesting. Um, but it's also like when it comes to me and where I am and how I got here, um, it's very important. And it's very important that, I recognize it because that helps my self-respect. Like, okay, you know, for some people, they, you know, the bar is here and they're starting it here. You know, the bar is still here for me, but I'm starting like down, down here, you know? And so it's, you know, like getting to grad school. I remember, you know, students who were more neurotypical, talking about how easy the classes were and 
um, not working nearly as hard as I did. And I was very motivated at that point and very focused, thankfully, but it was hard not to recognize that I was working much harder and getting much worse grades. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was very disappointing to me. I had to reconcile that. Um, I was, you know, really grateful to be there. And as I said, I loved the process. I loved the people. I loved the experience. I considered it the greatest opportunity and privilege of my life to have access to um, the material and the lessons that I learned in traditional Chinese medicine school. Um, really a wonderful uh, experience. So, um, so as I said, approaching 50 and just feeling like my life is a complete dumpster fire train wreck failure I'm disappointed in myself I don't you know maybe I don't have the character that I thought I had everybody hates me um I'll never get out of this you know all of these old doubts uh and beliefs that you know at this point in life you have to recognize this is part of the creative process life has ups and downs and you have there's no way around it. Like I, I am not on board with people who are like, you know, happiness is a choice. Yeah, it's a choice sometimes, but sometimes it's a crazy choice, right? Like, let's be real. And this is sort of my beef with that whole coaching movement is so much of it stems on diminishing people's, you know, personal authority like yeah i'm unhappy i'm unhappy because ever since i've been licensed as an acupuncturist i've been underpaid and underemployed and i'm passionate about acupuncture and i'm disappointed in the way i've been treated by my peers and i'm disappointed that the profession doesn't pay better and i'm disappointed that you know, in some ways, the acupuncture is overvalued. It's not really overvalued. It's probably that, you know, with treatments costing 80 to $250 a session, let's just say. But, you know, really to the individual who, you know, is going for pain management and could take a pill to get through their day, um, you know, the pill is, like five cents or two ten cents so why are they going to pay eighty dollars for a treatment that doesn't do as much as the pill um and there are a lot of arguments why they should um certainly very good ones but um realistically speaking you know acupuncture needs to be much more accessible and you know, it doesn't need to be so expensive. I don't think practitioners need to be quite so overeducated. I think the master's degrees that we have are overloaded with excessive training and excessive qualifications. And I think that there's too much dogma, too much mythology, um, you know, that the schools are still promoting ideas about you know, magical, mystical stuff um, is, you know, that's really, you know, the <laughs> Alex Tiberi, God bless him. What a great guy. He was, you know, it was his statement when acupuncture first sort of got established in this country that they weren't sure if they should be, you know, licensed or ordained. And I think that's like a really important point. Like, what are you doing in your practice? And are you, and it, <clears throat> if there's any question in your mind that you're providing some sort of magic, then you should be an ordained practitioner, not a licensed one. And patients have a right to know that you are exercising mystical practice on them because like quite honestly, it goes against some people's beliefs to participate in that kind of activity. Um, so anyways, uh, I thought I'd try and keep this to 10 minutes. Um, it's a little bit of a rant today. 
uh, try to be real, I guess, is, is what I'm saying to the coaches and the therapists out there. You know, the happiness thing is, is it, it can be quite offensive. And I think while it is important to cultivate a sense of peace, contentment, self-esteem, um, okayness, that, you know, this idea of happiness as Americans view it, associated with bliss and um, celebration is, is actually a disruption in the flow of chi, shall we say. So like it is more important to be even keeled, level, level headed, grounded and anchored um, in many ways. Um, you can't be too grounded. Like the human experience is really quite painful and um, to be fair, we need to be insanely optimistic just to get through the day, to drive a car on the highway, to, you know, to interact with our family members and hope that we won't be, re you know, re-triggered every time. Um, so we do have to act, you know, as human beings, we do need an excessive load of optimism. Um, but to remain emotionally even keeled um, and I guess ADHD, it comes back to that ADHD for me, um, that because I'm so easily dysregulated and it's so hard for me to come back from emotional excesses, whether it is ecstatic, uh, and blissful feelings or sadness or angry feelings, it's very hard for me to come back to, come back to status quo and I will cultivate you know, a more even keel by spending time alone, quite honestly, um, until, you know, my soul is starved and I like have nobody to talk to but God, right? So, um, and then, you know, God can come in and give me perspective again. But uh, I guess the point being that when you've been dealing with, with ADHD for so long and striving for that even keel, that you have to trust your gut, and if your gut is unhappy, it is absolute bullshit to tell someone to be unhappy, it, you know, is a choice, right? Um, it's a choice maybe to stay unhappy, like you're unhappy, you're unhappy, and that's your situation. You got to listen to that and take appropriate action, whether it is to, you know, process, you know, grief. Grief is real. You have to process that. It takes time. It takes time. It's 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 painful, um, and so it takes time. And and I don't like to you know negate people's feelings. Um, those feelings are the essence of life. Your emotions, you know, give you meaning and direction and um, fuel motivation. So. I really think people need to trust themselves. If you're getting messages of unhappy, that's something to look at, something to take action, something to examine. Um, and I guess, so I guess I may be picking on the semantics of choose to be happy and really uh, what it is that I think it needs to be said is uh, if you're unhappy, do you choose to stay that way? So that's my 14 minute uh, update for the day.